Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Monday the 22nd of July. Now, today I want to look at the relationship or possible relationships that are emerging between mRNA COVID vaccines, actually all COVID vaccines, but particularly the mRNA vaccines and cognitive decline and dementia. Now, with conditions like dementia that are pretty common already or cognitive decline, which is very common, it's harder to pick out anything that might have a particular cause. So fortunately, we're looking at a study today from South Korea with well over half a million participants, which gives pretty convincing uh, correlational uh, evidence, fairly good correlations at least, that there is an association between mRNA vaccines and mild cognitive decline and dementia, Alzheimer's disease specifically. But before we do that, let's look at a clip from Mr. Biden in 2022 from some of America's top pharmacies, Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, Albertsons. And we're here with a simple message. Get vaccinated. Update your vaccine, your COVID vaccine. It's incredibly effective, but the truth is not enough people are getting it. We've got to change that so we can all have a safe and healthy holiday season. That's why I'm getting my shot updated today. You're not giving me a shot. No, I'm not. Giving me a <laughs> All right. For vaccines. Say again. You think it's a mistake in New York to withdraw the vaccine mandate for five employers? No, I don't think. I, that's a local judgment. Yeah, it's interesting. I wouldn't say Mr. Biden was particularly crisp on that occasion, but he was coherent and answering questions spontaneously. I think we can see that there's been some decline in the more recent videos that we've seen. Interesting to see that Dr. Fauci declined to give him his injection. And we also noticed that the nurse giving the injection didn't aspirate as per protocols, but one that we consider needs uh, looked at to potentially amend it. Now let's get straight on to the details of this study now from South Korea. We'll start off with some of the results of this study to see if you want to watch the rest of the video. But the results were when they compared the vaccinated with the unvaccinated, there was an increased incidence of mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease in vaccinated individuals, particularly those receiving the mRNA vaccines within a three month post vaccination period. So most of this data collected at three months after the vaccinations were given. And of course, given that these conditions can take time to develop, we don't know how many more patients went on to develop it. It's simply outside the scope of this study. Now, the mRNA vaccine group compared to the group that weren't vaccinated, the odds ratio of Alzheimer's disease. So there was 1.1225. In other words, about a 22% higher likelihood that they would develop Alzheimer's disease within three months. And this is significant because developing Alzheimer's disease over three months is a very rapid development of Alzheimer's disease indeed. More typically, it would develop over several years. Uh, the probability of that happening was P equals 0.026. In other words, a significant result, very unlikely to arise by chance. Mild cognitive impairment, the odds ratio 2.37. In other words, well over two times, nearly 2.4 times more likely that mild cognitive impairment will occur in the group that have been vaccinated. And again, this is all within a three month period. And the odds of that happening by chance were only one in 1000, P equals 0.001. So pretty uh, interesting data from South Korea. No significant relationship was found with vascular dementia or Parkinson's disease, which is encouraging. So they didn't find that it was causing vascular dementia, diseases of the blood vessels resulting in deterioration of the brain, nor did they find a link with Parkinson's disease, which of course is very uh, encouraging. Now, um, that's the link for Mr. Biden's vaccine. This is the paper we're looking at here, a potential association between COVID-19 vaccination development of Alzheimer's disease, only published on the 28th of May 2024. Now, the background from the authors, the South Korean authors, is this. And again, why wasn't this done in the United States or the UK or Canada or Australia? Why, why is it often the Asian countries that seem to be leading the way in uh, openness 
on this? Could it be that researchers in the West are working under limitations? Who knows? Anyway, back to the point. The background that they give concerns about vaccine side effects, particularly potential links to neurodegenerative diseases, degeneration of the nervous system, such as Alzheimer's disease. The aim of the study is to investigate the association between COVID-19 vaccination and the onset of Alzheimer's disease and its prodromal state, mild cognitive impairment. So what they're saying is that mild cognitive impairment comes first and then the Alzheimer's develops. So how many of these people, and we saw that was well over, was nearly 2.4 times as many developed mild cognitive impairment, how many of those will go on to develop Alzheimer's disease at a later date? Well, we don't actually know. It was outside the parameters of the study. Let's hope there is a follow-up on this because that would be very valuable data to uh, assimilate. The design nationwide retrospective cohort study. So they're looking back and forming groups. Korean National uh, Health Insurance Service, data recorded three months after vaccination. Now the method, most of these participants came from Seoul in South Korea, analyzed data from a random sample. So that's important, the sample was random. So it shouldn't have any systematic biases in. 50% sample of the people available. Age 65 and over, clearly the risk for developing mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease is higher with increasing age. And well over 558,000 participants, well over half a million. So as we like, of course, in research, they're able to form two groups, a vaccinated group, group that actually had the vaccines, and an unvaccinated group that didn't have the vaccines. And so they're able to compare and contrast these to give the risks that we have uh, described. And the patients with vascular dementia or Parkinson's disease served as controls. And again, they found that it wasn't causing uh, vascular dementia or Parkinson's disease in this situation. So what did these researchers conclude from this? And again, why aren't we seeing such, such bold, um, open discussion? in Western countries? Why is this limited to uh, Asian countries and certain other countries? Why aren't we seeing it in New Zealand, in Canada, in Australia, UK, United States? Really is uh, quite bemusing the deafening silence that we are listening to. Anyway, their conclusions, preliminary evidence suggests a potential link between COVID-19 vaccines, particularly mRNA vaccines, and increased incidence of Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment. So it suggests a potential link. At least they're talking about this possibility. Need for further research to elucidate the relationship between vaccine-induced immune response and neurodegenerative processes. So this looks like they're thinking about vaccine-induced immune response and neurodegeneration. So what the authors here seem to be thinking is that the vaccine is causing an abnormal pathological immune response, which is then damaging, in this case, the central nervous system. Although we've interviewed people on this channel who've clearly got damage to the peripheral nervous system as well. And of course, that obviously opens up many other lines of research that could be pursued. Uh, and uh, advocating for continuous monitoring investigation into the vaccine's long-term neurological effects. So this needs to be an ongoing thing, because if it were that a neurodegenerative process was triggered, it could take several years for that neurodegenerative process to become evident. So we need this longer-term follow-up, and we need these comparisons. And of course, to get this, we even really start doing this in our sophisticated Western countries. We need release of uh, low-level participant-level data, which the government and the pharmaceutical companies have refused to release. So just a couple of graphics from the study paper in uh, Korea. Uh, COVID-19 vaccination, higher incidence of mild cognitive uh, impairment and Alzheimer's disease. Here's the graphics here. Now, this is the uh, 
incident rate of mild cognitive impairment and we see it's up within three months by what about 80 um, per 100,000 now the increase in Alzheimer's so the, the red line here of course is the uh, the vaccinated mRNA vaccines the black line is no vaccines and again in Alzheimer's disease we see a, a, a quite sharp increase uh, in the vaccinated red group as opposed to the unvaccinated black group and again how many of these would go on to develop from mild cognitive impairment to Alzheimer's disease in time we don't know so the degree to which this is a risk for Mr Biden of course we don't know he has had six Covid vaccines he has had Covid uh, three times six Covid vaccines this vaccine's so effective you've got to give it six times and he's had Covid three times as well I'll leave you to infer how effective it is at preventing Covid six vaccines three Covid infections with uh, Mr Biden now any particular case, of course, we can't say. This is a population scale study. We would assume that Mr. Biden is deficient in vitamin D. That could be a risk factor. As far as we know, Mr. Biden doesn't have uh, diabetes or insulin resistance, as far as we're aware. But we are fully aware he's had six COVID vaccines and three COVID infections. Let me know if you think that information is significant. But for now, um, with more questions than answers, we'll leave it there for today. Thank you for watching.